Hi, I'm James Schilling Law, and I'm here with Alice Manzer, who's the Chief Executive for Tourism Ireland. And actually, we're here in advance of a, a big event they do every year to explain their marketing plans for the coming year. And so we wanted to ha interview Alice about what those marketing plans will be, because it's always interesting to find out what Ireland has planned. And you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Alice, first of all, great to meet you. We haven't met before, but uh, it's it's. Uh, I, we were talking about when I was last in Ireland and things like that. But tonight you're going to be revealing your uh, marketing plans, and we'll have an article about that on this. But let's let's talk about how Ireland did last year in terms of visitor numbers, especially from the U.S. Oh, the U.S. is such a key market for us. So thank you so much. It's lovely to get to talk to you and all of your followers and viewers. Um, when we look at performance last year, U.S. really rebounded in terms of revenue to back where we were pre-COVID. Um, whilst the visitor numbers were a little bit behind the revenue growth, to be honest, that's in line with the trend overall where we're looking at, you know, higher value visitors um, who are staying for longer and, and spending more, more right? <laughs> and exploring more okay. as well, you oh, know, okay. and the US is, is a market where folks do tend to stay longer with us, eight days on average, exploring the regions and everything that the island of Ireland has to offer. So thank you to all of you for your friendship and for all that you do in helping visitors discover our island. Now, is the U.S. your number one market or number two? Where is it? You are number one. Number one? Oh, really? We beat, we beat, beat the English and everybody else, huh? Well, in terms of revenue value, number one. Yeah, all in right. visitor value, we would tend to have more visitors from um, Great Britain, but they they don't stay for as long. They don't discover they don't the magic. don't spend as much. Yeah, <laughs> they don't discover the magic the way you guys do. Now, uh, you're, you're announcing your, your plan for this coming year in 24. What are your goals for 24? I mean, uh, in particular, for visitors and spend from the U.S.? Well, uh, our goals overall are to keep growing that um, visitation from the US and we're super excited to be announcing with our airline partners new routes. It's going to be easier than ever to get to the island of Not Ireland. that it's hard to begin with, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy, but we're going to have 18 non-stop routes from the US. Denver and Minneapolis are launching. We've got JetBlue coming in as an airline. Really? That's amazing. They're going all over the place these days. Yeah. That's right. So they're going to be flying daily from JFK and from Boston into Dublin. So we're certainly excited. We're going to have 108% of the air capacity that we would have had same time last summer coming into summer 2024 so loads of opportunity to travel and our overall ambitions are to grow revenue from overseas tourism to the island of Ireland by 5.6 percent year over year so lots of ambition for growth and it's all going to hinge on inspiring visitors to come based on the iconic things to see and do on the island. Well, indeed, it's, if it's easier to get to as well with the new air service, and I can guarantee you that's going to help a lot. I mean, I, it really is a very, very easy flight. It's, what, six hours, something like that? Exactly. We are neighbors with the small matter of the Atlantic in between us. Well, it's just a small, small body of water. It's not a big deal. Now, let's talk about some of the themes uh, for your, your marketing campaigns this year. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what you're working on and wh why you think they'll resonate with the U.S. I know you're, you're, uh, we have the specter up here, Fill Your Heart with Ireland. You're continuing that campaign, correct? That's right. So we'll be running our Fill Your Heart with Ireland campaign featuring the Dairy Girls and Sharon Horgan and other folks who talk about what the island means to them. And that'll be running on TV and online. We also love to run publicity where we get folks out and about on the ground on the island of Ireland and we commission um, and co-produce TV shows that also help highlight what Ireland's got to offer. That will continue. Um, and we want to highlight those special moments, particularly in seasons and regions that are less discovered. So, for example, in springtime, St. Patrick's Day is a huge draw, 100,000 visitors staying for eight nights on average. And I have been there for St. Patrick's Day in Dublin. It was great. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. It's, it's, a it's, not a, it's quite as big a parade here, but it's, it's in Ireland, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. It's in Ireland, and so it's different. And then if we flip to the other end of the year... Um, Actually, Halloween is even more celebrated in the US than St. Patrick's Day is, but not everybody knows that Halloween originated 2,000 years ago in Celtic culture on the island of Ireland as the Festival of Samhain. So we're super excited to welcome visitors to experience Halloween in the home of Halloween Absolutely. on the island of so Ireland. So trick or treat uh, originated in Ireland. There we go. 
Well, certainly jack-o'-lanterns were originally turnips okay, rather than right. pumpkins. And people used to put costumes on because it was the time of year the Celts believed the barriers between one world and another were at their thinnest. And you needed to wear a costume to trick any of the other worldly folks into thinking you weren't you. So there's Celtic origins that are really fascinating um, to so many of the Halloween traditions. And we've got wonderful festivals like Puka in County Meath or Derry Halloween, which is the biggest Halloween of its t- Halloween festival of its type in Europe. Europe, um, that give brilliant reasons to come and discover that heritage. Well, I know my colleague, Alan Fine, who actually will be editing this video, uh, his, his aspiration is to be there for Halloween. So he's hoping to go maybe this year. Oh, we can't wait to welcome him. Yeah, so you'll see. You'll meet him later at the event. Now, uh, aside from um, uh, things like Halloween and things like St. Patrick's Day, what are some of the other things that uh, our our viewers, travel advisors, can key on when they're booking travel to Ireland? What are some of the events that and and different things like I think you said that, that well, one is the Atlantic Way. Let's talk a little bit about that because uh, yes, let's talk about the Wild Atlantic Way. So the Wild Atlantic Way feels like a coastal route that's been around forever because it goes through um, countryside, scenery, all up the west coast on the Atlantic that that goes back millennia. But actually the route itself only fully joined up 10 years ago. So Wild Atlantic Way is 10 this year and it's one of the longest joined up coastal routes in the world. It's about 1,600 miles, 2,600 kilometres. It's certainly one of the most beautiful and so with that 10 year birthday it's a brilliant time to discover the pristine beaches, the islands, Um, and all of the traditional music and dance and pub culture and so on along the route. Another one, if you want to, if, if 10 years does not impress you as a birthday, I can go even further back because it's actually the 700 year anniversary of the first written reference to whiskey anywhere in the world, which was in the Book of Ossery mm. in County Kilkenny. And it's a reference to Aqua Vita or Ishkabaha, Water of Life. And it gives Ireland the oldest whiskey tradition anywhere in the world. So with that 700... Older than Scotland, huh? O- older than Scotland. We're, we're, we have a little... This is going to be an interesting competition or, or older than Wales. Wales claims some whiskey too, right? Yeah, well, we've got our 1324 book of Ossery with the first documented reference. So this year is a great year also to discover that craft across 28 historic distilleries around the island. Now, you also have a, a few golf tournaments coming up this year, as always, because Ireland is one of the homes of golf, a- absolutely. T- talk a little bit about that attraction, because there are some, tur- some, some big uh, golf matches that you host, right? Absolutely. So Ireland has 400 golf courses, many Lynx quality golf courses, and there are some big tournaments coming up. Um, we've got the Open coming to Royal Port Rush next year. We've got uh, the Ryder Cup coming to Adair. We know that well. Seven. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a wonderful time to get out again on those incredible coastlines and in such a green place and to enjoy the sport. And you also, you're talking about a little bit of hidden gems in Ireland. I mean, mm. what are some things that are, you, you kind of want to, secret places that, that you, we should just tell our friends out there about that people should go over for? Oh, great question. Well, look, when we talk to consumers about why would you come to the island of Ireland, three things come up time and time again as the main motivators, and that's scenery, heritage, and people. And so I think hidden gems that are um, sort of honing in on some of those values are the ones that resonate the most. Um, For me, one of the things I love to do is get out on the water because within scenery, um, it's really magical to get out on a boat, get out on the water, whether it's inland waterways or along the wild Atlantic way. Um, Ireland is an island, but did you know that we're also surrounded by tiny islands? So on the wild Atlantic way, you can visit the Blasket Islands, the Aran Islands, Clare Island, Clue Bay in County Mayo has 365 islands, that's one for every day of the year, that you can boat around. And so I think that's a top tip, Rathlin Island on the Causeway Coast. Top tip is to get out um, and explore the islands of the island of Ireland. Um, And then on the heritage side, I think, you know, you can't make a trip without exploring some of the castles. I was going to say that, I'm a castle guy and I love going to all, all the castles, whether you're actually staying in the castle or visiting, it's amazing. Yes. And actually, that brings me on to another hidden gem. I think there's some lovely alternatives.
alternative types of accommodation now um, where you can stay in lighthouses along the coast, you can stay in castles, in cottages. So that can make an, a lovely complement to any trip as well is to live in the heritage field, not just not just uh, visit it. And I've been lucky enough to stay in a couple of castles over there and some of the, the great heritage homes and, and, and the, the, the lodges that you have out there. Now, what kind of traveler are you looking for here in the U.S.? What, what is your, you know, who are you targeting uh, for travel, especially this year? Yeah, great question. So we find, you know, if, uh, for visitors coming to the island of Ireland, again, with those motivators of scenery, heritage, the warmth of our people, it tends to be folks who have the funds to travel, transatlantic, first of all, that they're happy to travel out of peak season, that they want to explore and appreciate both nature and outdoor activities, but then also the history and the heritage. So it's a sort of curious traveler who's interested in culture, who's interested in exploration. And I think with all of the well-being trends at the moment, that people spend so much time on screens coping with their day-to-day -day responsibilities, more and more we're finding there's a segment who just want to use their holiday not only to relax, but to turn your mindset to something different, to learn something new, spend time with a different culture and community, and come back feeling refreshed in body and mind. And so that's what we want to offer. Well, definitely. In my time in there, I always come back. I love it. I want to go back again because it is just a lovely country. Now, uh, how can travel advisors use your, this campaign and others to really better sell Ireland to their customers right now? Yeah. Um, well, we're so appreciative, first of all, of what travel advisors do. You know, we um, know that 26% of our visitors coming from the U.S. will come via tours that they've booked with third parties, but actually 40% will turn to advisors or travel trade of some sort to get a feel for what they should see and do. Mm -hmm. So for everybody listening, ways to get involved. Um, certainly, we've got our website, Ireland.com, which has um, both general information and then up and coming fun facts. We also love to bring over uh, the tourism industry folks from the island of Ireland. So some of those people running the castles, the cottages, the mm -hmm. country pubs, and bring them to events right around the US so that the travel trade can come and engage in person. Mm -hmm. So you can expect more of that from us over this year. And of course, follow us on our socials. It's Tourism Ireland on Instagram and Facebook, and that'll give you inspiration on a daily basis of what are some of the most beautiful and interesting things to see and do. Anything else you want to say to our 126,000 travel advisors out there, many of whom have booked Ireland, but uh, want to, may want to do it this year for their clients? Well, I think 2024, for all of the reasons we've discussed, for access, um, for attractions, for anniversaries, be it 10 years of Wild Atlantic Way or 700 years of Irish whiskey, it's going to be a wonderful time to visit. And I just want to thank everybody out there for everything you do to help visitors and U.S. folks discover what Ireland has to offer. So thank you so much. And thank you, James, for having me today. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm in your office this year, so, uh, and tonight you have this event, uh, and so they're going to reveal the big marketing plan, and you'll read about it on Insider Travel Report to do. Again, thank you. It's great to meet you. You too. Thank you. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.